from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Get started. It's time for. Yes. Thanksgiving Day, I've been cooking all night. <laughs> I'm kidding. Are you kidding me? I am so over the Thanksgiving food, although we do have a remix happening a little later on in the show with the food that you have. But I can say this, there comes a time, like Thanksgiving is important to college kids because college kids leave campus and come home. And that's where they can party like rock stars with the losers that they left back in high school. <laughs> No, I, like I, I remember this so much. Like, it would be so fun coming home, you know, every year and you know seeing what everyone's doing in the town. You know, you you party and you drink till you puke and 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 you, and you eat that food at your parents' house and then you go back out with your friends and then you go back to college. I think Thanksgiving is important for college kids, uh, and Thanksgiving is important for people who understand it's not about the food; it's about the thanks. We. I mean, <clears throat> all things considered, we at my home and my family, uh, uh, along with the three of us, Kevin, Kevin and me, we've had a really good year because there were ebbs and flows, but everything has worked itself out. I feel well, young Kev's in school, big Kev's still that dude, my parents are here with us, my sister, I love my, anyway, on and on and on. So look, we can eat a turkey sandwich from the deli up the street. <laughs> I don't care, cranberry sauce, <laughs> with the indentation of the can. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. But I do plan on watching a lot of Lifetime movies, a lot of ID Channel, and all that other kind of stuff. I, that, that, to me, is the part of Thanksgiving that I love as well. Not just family, but what's on TV, you know? Yeah. So, there is another Michael Jackson biopic that may be coming to TV. You're not Michaeled out? No. Okay, all right, let me explain. Michael has this longtime friend who didn't, he, actually Michael, the, the boy was five. He's now a man. Five years old when he met Michael. His name is Frank Cassio. And he um, is reportedly shopping his story of uh, several studio things with Michael and just life. like. Frank had a really, really regular house in New Jersey and Michael would show up in Jersey and help the mom vacuum the carpet and he would like to use the Windex and you know, all that other kind of stuff. In the meantime, if Michael were alive, he'd be 38 and, or excuse me, uh, 60. And so, and so, and so, but, but um, this guy right here is 38. Look. I get it, Michael wanted to be around normal families and stuff like that, but how you befriend a five-year-old when you're so old, I, don't, I still don't understand it. However, I still like Michael's music. His legacy is not so tainted to me that I have to change the channel when you are not alone. <laughs> like, I am there with him, you know? 
<laughs> but um, this is nothing that I care to watch. I am Michaeled out. We know, we all have our suspicions. We believe what we believe. Uh, clap if you're Michaeled out. <laughs> In terms of the movies and stuff, the, the movies. The only way I would care, and probably not even then, is if one of the family members did a movie about him. But if it's going to be watered down, you know, to get a bigger piece of the estate, you know, you know whatever, I, I don't care. Frank, good luck with your shopping. I'm not watching. Uh, so Kim Kardashian uh, doesn't style herself anymore. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> they said good. No, well, if you, have, if, you have, if you have not noticed, for the past, like, several months to almost a year, right, Norman? Like a long time. A long right? time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She's been leaving it to Kanye's team and his team at Yeezy to, to outfit her. And she says she completely trusts them, and that's that. Well, you know what? We might not be able to wear that, but I don't mind this for her. Put this one picture up, though. That just still on aisle one. <laughs> he, here, here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, you know, Kim's got enough to think about between the kids. You know, Kanye is not well. She's going along to get along. She's got her makeup or whatever she's got going on. I, I mean, to me, she looks cool right here. We wouldn't wear it, maybe. If we could, maybe we... We would. Uh-huh. I guess, you know, it's one less thing to think about, uh, you know, like what am I going to wear today? You just go to your husband's stylist and they drop you in something and all you have to think about is that you stay a particular size. Now see, that's the headache. Now, to rib or not to rib? <laughs> that is the question. People have been saying that she perhaps got a rib removed to have her waist this small. <laughs> Somebody in our Hot Topics meeting said cool sculpting. <laughs> Look. Look, obviously none of this is natural, but you know what? She looks, she looks great in terms of, Suzanne, stop screwing your face. No, I, I, she, she looks completely different. Like, w what's happening? She's under duress. I, I guess so, but <laughs> she just looks I, completely different to me. L look at the clear shoes, wait until her. her feet start fogging up. Oh. And those are Yeezys Bad. too. No, what's happening to her is that she's an aging beauty. You see, this is the problem. When you girls put so much into your beauty and you're 28 or 25 or 28, Kim is now 37 years old, okay? <laughs> she, that, that, and that's not old. All I'm saying is that she's an aging beauty. And she's trying to lead the pack of the beauties because she started a lot of what a lot of girls are doing, including her own sisters, including all, uh, every other girl on Instagram. So being that she's the queen of the pack, she's stuck in a hole where she's got to keep it going. And I get it. I get it. Uh, who's wearing that? <laughs> Drip drop crotch. <laughs> Just... Under boob sweat. <laughs> then again, I don't picture them having sex. So it really doesn't matter. I think she, oh, police. Oh, police. Look at him. <laughs> what is on his ankles? Look, 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 look. What is that? What is that? But she looks hot. And she's keeping her man happy, not wanting to argue at home, go along to get along, I guess. Hey! Hey! There's no lozenge here. Uh-oh. It's okay. I'll deal with it during commercial. 
<laughs> no, I'm playing. You don't have to rush one. Oh, Doug, thank you. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> um, and don't act like I was being mean. You know I do the most, just to make you laugh. Um, so, little Kim, everyone, has saved her home in New Jersey now again. Now, they say it's a $2 million mansion, but I gotta tell you something. This is a whole lot more than $2 million in Jersey. Maybe she bought it like uh, 25 years ago. I, I don't know. But uh, this is her abode. And um, it was up for foreclosure. Do you remember? We were telling you the story on Hot Topics. She read it every place. Um, because she was missing her mortgage payments. Well, and by the way, this has happened numerous o times in Kim's ownership of this home. So Kim's mortgage company wanted to foreclose on her mansion again um, and use the, um, pay off, use the money to pay off her debt. But Kim begged the judge for forgiveness. Now, to know little Kim is to understand, she's only this big. <laughs> she's got the charm and I could see her convincing a judge. And you know, oh judge, please. <laughs> Me and royalty, you know, I'm, I'm out here in these streets. I mean, judge, I'm, I'm trying the best I can. She's adorable. Little Kim is a, she's got an adorable disposition. So the judge has allowed Kim to stay in the home, Kim won, but under one condition. She's got to pay off her $32,297.41 debt. I don't know how we know this information. <laughs> but we know stuff. So um, Kim was allowed to break it up in three installments of $10,155.47. Well, this is what I would do if I were Kim. First of all, there are only a few old school um, female rappers who could still come back swinging at these girls out here who think they're doing it. Missy? I love DeBrat. Yeah. And Kim, off the top of my head, there might be one or two more I can't think, but Kim could come out swinging on these girls. <laughs> but you have to pay this off quick. And studio, you know, by the time you get in the studio and, and make the music, your house will be gone again. So you've got to do something quick. You know what I say? Call up Mona Scott. You get yourself a reality show. <laughs> I mean, but there were numerous people in our Hot Topics meeting and only me and Norman were the ones who said we'd watch. Yep. And, and we're like, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> I would watch a little Kim reality show and she can incorporate that in, so she'll get that Mona Scott check. And of course, you do a heist, Kim. You know, you get more money from Mona than the other girls who do their shows, because you're Kim. All right, then, Kim, this will follow you between being a mom, driving around, having a boyfriend, and most importantly, working on, um, not a tour, not a tour, but like spot dates, spot dates. You know, where you go out someplace and you do a quick money grab of 8,000 here. I don't know what Kim is worth right now when she goes out to a club, but all I'm saying is she can't get the same 32 at one drop, but between love and hip hop and a few spot dates, Kim, you could pay this off quickly. The thing is, Kim, you gotta lay off the plastic surgery. <laughs> and also, you, you stop having champagne tastes. This is a critical time. You know, don't stop with the buying of the clothes and stuff. If people aren't going to give them to you, then you wear something from back in your wardrobe. You've always been a fly girl. So you can remix stuff. Most of these young girls out here doing it now don't recall a lot of your wardrobe anyway. You pull some of that stuff out, dust it off. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> right? Good luck, Kim. Good luck.
clap if you'd watch a little Kim reality show. So, Jimmy Fallon was out for dinner with his wife recently. And there was a table near them and they were talking loud, debating over whether they should go over and say hi or give he and his wife privacy. His wife has got a smile like a supermodel, doesn't she? She's beautiful. Nancy, I think her name is. Anyway, so they're, you know, should we say hi? Should we give them privacy? They ended up giving them privacy this next table over. So after um, Jimmy and his wife finished having dinner, Jimmy actually went over to them and thanked them for not interrupting them and, and, and paid their $1,136 bill. you do it. The problem is now, Jimmy, a lot of people are gonna get the idea that if they, do, if, if they leave you alone, you're gonna pay their bill and stuff. And that's, you know. Anyway, uh, happy Thanksgiving, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> so, every Thanksgiving, I have in my head dream guests. Now, I don't have guests, I have family. So when I say a dream, I'm not really having these people over. But in my head, if I was more social. Um, so here's who I have for, do you remember how I set this up every year, you guys? I always have people over. Yeah. All right, well, first of all, this year for Thanksgiving, I want Carla Hall doing all the cooking. Yeah. She's a very good cook. And so Carla will cook. Then, every year I have Mariah Carey. Every, every year, every year, every year. In my head. And now, you know, because the, the twins are here, so the, she brings the twins and they sit at the children's table. And, um, and um, you know, because she's been, been with her boyfriend, Brian Tanaka, for a reasonable amount of time, he's invited too. Why not? <laughs> Why not? All right, Stevie J and Faith Evans. Yeah. Only cause I need to know more. Yeah. And once, once we all sit there, you know what I'm saying, and the Remy's in your system, they're gonna, they'll start talking and I'll take notes and bring them back to you in my head. Yeah. Uh-huh. I still refuse to believe that they're married. <laughs> so everyone's talking politics uh, this year. Um, so nobody better to have than Stormy Daniels. <laughs> right? <laughs> so far, I think everyone's getting along pretty well, don't you? Yes. All right, then ding dong, it's Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Why not? All right, now, three years ago, the, fo the following guest <laughs> bit his wife on the leg in thanks on Thanksgiving. <laughs> she bit him? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so, and that would be Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're in the process of a divorce. This could be, this could be a good place for him. Do you like my guests so far? Yeah. Everybody, everybody talking and chatting. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> I thought my guest list was finished, but I have a nice dining room table and there's a big leaf that you can pull, the, the leaf? Yeah. Now pull out the leaf and make room for Charles Barkley. <laughs> Look. Uh, I don't know Charles Barkley, uh, he doesn't know me, but he seems to have like this lovable personality and I think that he would bring the whole room together and all, uh, don't you love my guests for Thanksgiving? Thank you. Clap a little louder, we got more great show for everybody. Love you, Chef Alex.
Juan Shelly is here with some delicious Thanksgiving recipes. But up next, actor and comedian Lil Rel Hauer is here. So grab a snack.